welcome to Fit for Life Radio, guys. I am Will, here with my two bros, Ben. Yup. Gary. Yo. Hey. Mm. All right, so today we covered, um, it's a quick one, we covered a couple of cool cool topics. Um, started out with kind of a, an interesting one, good versus bad foods, and kind of how a lot of foods are villainized and, and whatnot, and, and kind of dug in on what does that really mean. Um, and then kind of, I kind of evolved into processed versus unprocessed foods, benefits of that. Um, and then the Twinkie diet. I know some of yeah. you have heard about that. That is super interesting. Which is interesting, you know, like, and we kind of dug in on, on why that worked for the guy. Um, and then kind of finished up with Ben's relationship with Pop-Tarts. Just take, just take. And why it started out okay, but yeah. ended up not being the best thing for him over time. Isn't that every relationship? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Ben's relationship with. And then, yeah. <laughs> Insert anything. Nah. Um, so we kind of d- dug in on that, and then we touched on, on Gary's DEXA scan, which he just brings up mm. in any conversation he possibly can. Oh, that... Let's yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we'll do a further episode on mm. that. So, touched on all of that. It's a short one. Um, but yeah, you guys are going to love it. <sighs> oh. <sighs> all right, let's, let's get into it. Fit for Life Radio. We are here. Another week, middle of March. I'm middle of sure. them all. Uh, I know it's... Uh, this hurts because I know I'm coming back, and I know it just snowed there in March, which is just unacceptable in, in Virginia. Yeah. Snowing. Yeah, it's been awful. No one was ready. Let's get to it, baby. Let's get to the, the good part. Mm-mm-mm. Get to that uh, sunny and 70. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, sunny and 90, whatever. I mean, anything yeah, It doesn't matter. Snow, yeah. It's yeah. fine. Well, so let's uh, today we've been talking about and... <clears throat> We've realized the, sometimes you feel like you need to not bore people and do a million different topics, but then you realize that the basics just need to be reiterated over and over and over. Yep. You know, because ultimately people don't do them. Just and keep like, shoving them in people's faces. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> and um, so today we want to talk about food choices in general, right? Ooh. Like where does good and bad come from? You know, like that whole... Like, real clear cut. Good versus bad. Good versus bad that people feel like they need. Um, I want to eat the dark side foods. The dark side foods. What foods are on the dark side? We'll try to keep Mm. it simple. A little nutrition science, just so you know. Food is made up of nutrients. Macronutrients and micronutrients, right? Macronutrients are proteins, carbs, fats, and alcohol. Ooh. Mm Mm-hmm. And micronutrients are like your vitamins and minerals, right? So vitamin C, uh, magnesium, things like that, right? Like that's it. Like your that goes into food goes into your body and gets broken down into these things, and your body uses those those different nutrients, right? So here's the thing. Let's think of a quote unquote good food, healthy food. Orange, an orange, right? Well, what's good about an orange? It has vitamin C, right, and nutrients. That that's you know what people typically think of well let's take a food that people think of as as bad okay so let's say pizza no right mm-hmm. well pizza has vitamin c and calcium and, and micronutrients and macronutrients just like an orange right mm-hmm. yep are they any different no does your body recognize them differently no so so where does this come this good and bad thing come from uh it comes from really if we're going to call uh, cause a food a bad food it it's really only inherently bad if it's it's easy to over it's super calorie dense and easy to over consume right mm-hmm. because then then we over consume calories which then leads to weight gain and then the excess weight gain and body weight leads to unhealthy things right does that make yep. sense so ultimately like pizza is could be considered worse than an orange because, I mean, let's be real, like, we could eat three slices of pizza, so whack back, you know, what, I don't know, 1,500 calories, and then, I mean, how we'd have to eat 15 oranges to do that. Dude. <laughs> which, which one's more likely? You know what? Which one's more likely to give you the poops, too? Mm. Honestly, just, I think 15 oranges would give you the say, poops, man. Just hearing that now, I kind of want to <laughs> just eat. 15 yeah. oranges and eat three pieces of pizza like and how see which one I like better. How many people could actually do that, though? 
there's too much fiber. Your body doesn't want it. You know, you're getting all the nutrients you need, like with two oranges. Hey, <laughs> per- one. Per- perfect example too. That's the other thing. Like anything in excess can be bad, right? Like, dude, yep. if you eat if you eat too much broccoli, like you'd have to eat a lot. Ooh, but like let- you get you get too much fiber, and and there'd be negative consequences. I'm gonna talk about this because I read it yesterday, and we're talking about fruit. So we're gonna talk about Steve Jobs for a second because he did a fruititarian diet, which blows my mind. It's like 30 bananas a day, basically. Bro, Whoa. he literally ate all fruit, and what do you know? He died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, so weird, yeah, right? Your body yeah. just dealing with fructose all the time um, oh, and continued to do that after he had cancer, which is even worse. You know, you're just oh. eating fucking fruit all day. Um, but then, you know how Ashton Kutcher, he did the Steve Jobs movie. Like, yeah. he, he played him, and he got, got him to the role. Dude, he ate all fruit diet. And ended up with pancreatic problems. Like, they resolved, but, like, cl- like during filming, like, he had oh. issues because he ate all fucking fruit all day. So, perfect example of overdoing something that is inherently a good food, as people call it, right? Do- doesn't your body tell you, no, stop, don't do this? Yeah. Yeah, or it gives like, you uh, cravings, how many right? oranges? How many oranges in does that orange no longer seem appealing? Yeah, like exactly. three? Two or three? I don't think I've had more than three oranges at a Dude, time. Dude, two oranges <laughs> and I'm done. Like, I love them, but I just... You hit that point where you get, you get palate fatigue real easy on stuff like that, I think. But and what you're about just done. And here's the pizza, thing. though? How many Never hit palate pizza? fatigue ever on pizza. Yeah. Wow, that's I, but I think feel about like it. there's something there. Pizza has everything, right? Like you're getting some protein, you're getting carbs, you're getting fat, you're getting you know, you know what I'm saying? That's why and we're attracted getting low to it. in that nice perfect ratio. It has everything <laughs> we need. But think about it, dude, if you ate nothing but fruit for 4 days, how bad would you be craving some meat? Dude, <laughs> fucking bad. You yeah. would, you no, like that's your body bad. telling you. You know, that's why when people, yeah. I was watching a TV show on Netflix and the girl was like going vegan and you know she's like a day in and they were at a carnival and she's eating cauliflower uh, tacos and then she just like caved in and just demolished a beef taco. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, those that every ur- time like that urge is there for a reason. You know, like <laughs> yeah, you, you need protein, like legit, like. You need protein to live. So now here's the thing. You can get it from plants only. Absolutely. It's just, it's just that most people do, do a vegetarian diet like half, haphazard, you know? Like they're just well, eating. Well, they'll usually just eat vegetables, right? They'll, they'll right. have chips. like a salad for lunch and a salad for dinner. Let's be and... real. Let's be real. That's not a normal vegetarian diet. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm talking about people with good intentions that still it's, executes poorly. Or, or, Oreos are, ve- are vegan. The, Oreos are uh, vegan. Yeah. Let's, let's have Oreo. But I know what you're saying. I'm but even then, like, macro. dude, if you're if you think you're doing well and you're having like, oh, I'm having vegetables at every meal, and you end up eating 400 calories in a day, oh. counting fiber and and you know, like, dude, you're not doing well. You need other stuff. Well, then you, if you're not getting the essential amino acids, you're not giving your body the building blocks it needs to do anything to live, know? to survive, yeah, to thrive. So. And here's the thing, you can thrive without meat and on a vegetarian diet. Right? Oh, for sure. You just have to work a little harder at getting your protein and, and mixing your sources and yeah. stuff. And, and here's another perfect example of okay, good and bad foods, right? This is where good and bad foods fails again because it depends on who you're talking to, right? Yep. You can go talk to a vegan. What's, what's a bad food? Meat. meat. Okay. You can go talk to a paleo person. What's the, what's the best food in the world? Meat. Meat. So right there, it's like good for one person, the, the good and bad is completely different. So then people just get confused, you know, or you can go talk to yeah, a vegetarian and carbs. Carbs are great, right? I mean, you, yep. you ha- I mean, the, most of your food choices are carbs. Mm-hmm. Then you can go talk to a keto person. Dude, carbs are the devil. Yep. Right. So good exactly. and ba- good, there's good and bad again. Right. So it's just silly. Yep. You, you yep. know, it's just like silly. So and you really like what it boils down to is like. What's what, what do you prefer and what's sustainable and are you getting your minimum required nutrients? Exactly. Like what can you – because if you are not the type of person and most people aren't that can like eat the right amount of pizza to hit you know the right amount of, of macronutrients oh. and stuff that they need, like, like that's difficult to do and it's hard not to overeat, right? That, that's why stuff like bread and <laughs> pasta like are labeled bad. Like they're not inherently bad. They're really not. But foods like that are really easy to overeat. Mm-hmm. Just because like they're processed, um, they aren't quite as filling as say like a sweet potato or something like that. So really, it's just easy for you to eat more than you need, or like after you finish eating whatever that meal is, want something else rather than being full from something with a little more fiber. 
So that's really where the, I guess, good and bad comes in. But it's just, you know, it's, it's really all the same. Um, but what can you do properly? Yep. You know, like what, what fits into your lifestyle and what you're trying to achieve? My, my pizza wall is thin. Yeah. I, I, when I, I, I break through that line, I've had too much. Like, I don't know until I've gone Way too much, far. much farther. Yeah. 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 That's everybody, man. Yeah. Pizza switches <laughs> off that switch. And you're just like, man, I need more. I could eat a whole pizza. Yeah. Easy. Mm. Just, keep, just keep going. Yeah. So a, do a great example of this is, have, have you all seen that Twinkie diet study? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's calories so in, with, calories with, out. Yeah, and, and ultimately, like, people get on this, like, really angelic trip of, like, the more, for some reason, like, the more vitamins you get, like, you're going to get more points, like, at the end of your life or something, you know? Like, no. if I eat more <laughs> kale, I get more, no, like, you just need a, the, uh, a certain amount of nutrients, right? Like, yep. um, and then ultimately, like, if even if you overconsume sweet potatoes and kale and you're gaining weight, like that's unhealthy, you know, like then those foods are becoming bad. Like you only need, but so much vitamin A and C, like just getting more doesn't mean anything. And then if you're getting more calories, you're doing a disservice. So this guy who's a professor, he did a study where he like basically just ate like protein shakes and some, some, I think he maybe had some veggies to get, you know, some of the micronutrients. I thought he only took like uh, vitamins. If you know me, you know, I'm always on the run up early and home late. So having a three hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash provengrit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. Vitamins. Like That's what it was. It was protein and vitamins. So, so he got those, those, and then the rest of his diet was like Twinkies and other some other like hostess, hostess cakes. cakes and stuff. Mm. Yeah. But he made sure that he stayed in a calorie deficit, Boom. right? And he lost twenty seven pounds. He did his blood work and everything. Everything improved, right? All, yeah. all his blood work because he lost weight and ultimately, like controlling that total intake is number one, right? And then if you're getting your minimum requirement for the nutrients you need, like you're gonna be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. The problem comes again, 
Now again, like if you just start over consuming foods and Twinkies are a lot easier to overeat than broccoli, like that's not healthy, right? Yep. right. But so it's just understanding that that doesn't mean a twin like these foods are bad or, or, or good. Like any food can be bad or good. Um, you know, it, it's just understanding like that having labels on things is not it's just gonna mess you up mentally. You know? Yeah. Like bread, right? Like ha- like. Bread gets a bad uh, a bad rap. Like people think, oh, I'm gonna cut bread, right, and lose weight. Well, yeah, if, if your diet was mostly bread, like you had toast for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch, uh, you know, rolls with your roll dinner, rolls yeah. with your dinner, and you cut that out, like yeah, you might lose weight because you just cut out food, you lowered your calories, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't that the bread was bad. It's just that you were over consuming food and you cut out like half of what you normally eat because a lot of people eat a lot of bread, yep. and, and lost weight. So so that's a so that's the thing, right? Like that's a great way to improve your diet if you eat a lot of bread. Just you could simply say, "I'm going to cut out bread," and good things happen because you lowered your calories, right? But I mean, you can do that with anything. You can insert any food in there, right? So you could have. So say you're somebody who eats ten pieces of fruit a day, which is outrageous. But let's just mm-hmm. for this example, and you cut down your fruit to two pieces a day. Like, dude, you're going to lose weight. Yeah. Like yep. that's that's point blank. Or if you eat. You know, four pounds of meat a day and you cut it down to two. You're probably going to lose weight. Mm-hmm. You know, these are all extreme examples, but they all fill the same, the same criteria of you are overdoing something and you cut calories out in some fashion. Boom. Yep. But what you'll find, and hey, uh, Ben and I had a great discussion on this, which we'll, we'll dive into this, is um, okay, but then say you're like, well, you know what? I like bread and I want to eat bread, so I'm going to make it work, kind of like the Twinkie diet. But then you don't eat many veggies and fiber and stuff. Well, guess what? Like you're probably going to be hungry all the time, and it's going to be harder to stay in that deficit, right? Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like so then, yep. but if the di- base of your diet is lean proteins, fruits, and veggies, which help fill you up, give you the nutrients, you're going to be less likely to overeat those other foods, right? Yep. Right. And I, I remember Ben talking to you one time. You were kind of doing a little experiment, or, or just got lazy, and you were, and you mentioned how you went from you know most of your carbs being um, you know, oh, rice yeah, and potatoes yeah. to more processed stuff, right? Yep. And yep. you said how you noticed that your cravings increased and, and, and then you wanted to eat more and it was just like, talk about that a little, like kind of like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely... We'll go with an experiment and being lazy and we'll, <laughs> they're both right. I mean, and, because, uh, <laughs> like, and because a Pop-Tart is more delicious than... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what's than, up. Than you rice. don't... It, say you just you just feel like you don't have to say no as much when really you're just asking yourself over and over and over the same thing because yeah you have a pop tart today and then uh, yeah no rice tomorrow let's go with uh, some donuts and then uh, you know but macro wise pretty close pretty pretty similar your energy uh, like goes way down that was that was the that was a big one too is like energy for workouts energy for uh, like sleep cycle even um, because rice and potato you use that a lot a lot better than uh than those twinkies well, more nutrient oreo, dense, thins. You know? yeah. oreo thins you yeah. yeah. like yeah. oreo thins aren't very nutrient dense it's just pure sugar and wheat like that's about it right and, and I, I i was gonna say I, I looked about the same um like for a while and then just like you guys said, it opens the door, and you start overeating it. There's no way you stay. Yeah, one pop tart, <laughs> like one thing, does, is not enough anymore. You go to the store and you try to crush that whole box because, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, you're trying to manage these carbs, but well, you're, you're trying, trying to, to tick that box because then that reward, like your body, your brain wants a little more, a little more, a little more, and that's why one, one pack of pop tarts turns into two, and then you're like, just, hey, you know what, man, yeah. I want three packs of pop tarts, and that's what will happen with processed foods and why it's so like harder to manage than more nutrient dense stuff right that's it right there those processed foods are engineered to taste amazing right which then leads to like you're they're easy to overeat right yep. so right that's another you know that's another part of it is like hey like these processed foods are made in a lab to taste amazing and ben you're a great intuitive eater but then over time those foods start to throw you off right dude bingo i mean like having enough protein is like this the most central thing it it, it, like builds any type of food instinct you develop i feel 
Um, like in my experience, if I don't have enough protein, I can't tell what it's I'm hungry for. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And when you have those food instincts, you can't trust them. Um, but now the other side of it, yeah, it was when I did this little experiment. Um, still hit my protein numbers, so the food instincts started okay. And again, kind of looked the same for a while. But enough of that processed food, enough of yourself having to say, hmm, is that me actually being hungry? Or is the Pop-Tart that's actually engineered to make me feel hungry sending that signal? That line gets blurred, especially if you get tired, especially after a hard workout. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you stop, you really stop listening. And the key to actually being able to listen to instinct is by doing it all the time and then seeing the result and building trust with yourself. Because every time you open your, your mouth, you think, I mean, how often do you listen to your gut? If you don't do it often, then it's going to be a lot more difficult when you actually want that Pop-Tart mm-hmm. to then listen to your gut and say, you know what? I want this Pop Tart because I had a Pop Tart yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it's, and this um, is going to taste good. I know how it's going to taste. Yes. Like, so, so, yeah, developing food instinct is a practice just like everything else is. And the more processed stuff you add in, the tougher it is to hear it. You're just making it harder. Yeah, so it's funny. I think we've come full circle. Where in the beginning, we, it's almost like we're trying to say, hey, like these foods aren't bad, which they're not. But there's a reason eating majority of your diet whole foods is the way to go. You know, yeah, right, and that's right. what that's what we want you to understand is don't villainize any food. Like you can enjoy any food as long as you know you you keep your uh, intake in check. But you're just ma- if you say, oh, well, the Twinkie diet can work. If you try to do that long term, it's a losing battle because of these other reasons, right? You know, so right. big picture take home message is like don't don't like guilt yourself and think that any foods off limits are good or bad. It's just understanding the big picture, and then for the most part, 80-20, right? Like 80% of your diet should be lean proteins, veggies, fruits, you know, because they're going to help you feel full. They're going to give you those nutrients. And then beyond that, like eat eat stuff you enjoy and favorites and and thing, and don't feel bad about it, you know? It's, it's, uh, you know, that, that's pretty simple, straightforward kind of, kind of rule to follow, you know? Yep. Yeah. So, and, you know, just understand that most different diets you hear and all these things, m- most stuff gets developed in these cult followings because of emotions, right? Mm. Mm. You know, like yeah. it doesn't like it. People people get super emotionally attached to one thing and don't want to be right or wrong, and then stuff gets villainized for no reason. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so like re- like you just don't want to fall down that down that rabbit hole, um, and you know. So we're just like, fueling ourselves. That's all we're trying to do. And we're trying to make it efficient, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Good old fuel. So, so yes. <laughs> so next time you, you kind of, uh, you know, have, if you want to have pasta for dinner, like have pasta, but understand, you know, it, you, two cups of pasta looks like nothing on a plate, but it's say four or 500 calories. Whereas, you know, a cup of sweet potato is going to make you feel more full, has a little more fiber and it's harder to overeat, you yep. know, so do what's right for you. But like, that doesn't mean one's better than the other um, in, the, in the big picture and yep. one should be villainized. So, um, and again, if you eat tons of broccoli and lean protein throughout the day, then and you, you could have pasta every night if you want it to, you know, yep. if it's going to work better that way, if all you eat is pasta, you're probably going to, going to struggle, you know, yep. so mm. moderation. Weird moderation, mm-hmm. that thing. All right. So ho- hopefully that, that helps. Um, and you guys feel, you know, don't guilt yourself so hard or just kind of have a better understanding of, of the science of it. And, you know, for some people that might kind of click something in, in, their, uh, in their psyche, help them out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're checking out. You got anything you want to add, guys? No. Uh, that's it. That's yeah, it. That's sorry. covered. Yeah. That's it. You having any pop tarts today, Ben? I'm not actually. No. After 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 your results, Gary, man, I haven't. Mm, I've had to. Mm, I've had to straighten out. Yeah, not thinking about pop tarts. I, I, I walk around here pretending like it doesn't affect me, but it does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Keeps yeah. you up at night. It does, man. Yeah. I was hit. I was hitting my tipping point though. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, how do you know? How do you know you've hit your tipping point? Like, what, I, are, are you too many? Like, too many hours spent hungry? Or is no. it I, so, I, like it was uh, food was on my mind too much, start to get on my mind too much. Yeah. You start yeah. craving, you know, start start at you start following Instagram accounts that are just food. 
you know? Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And again, like I, I went from 11 or basically 12% to 9% in, in the eight weeks. And it was pretty easy. Like I just had to uh, say no a little more, you know, eat right. a little less in my baseline diet. And then on the weekends, be a little more picky with the amounts, right? I, ne- I didn't have to give anything up. I still had a couple beers when we went to a birthday party, yeah. uh, had ice cream every week. It was just having uh, more tabs on the amounts I was eating. But eventually when you just get really low in body fat and you're, you know, eating in a deficit, like your body wants you thinks you're starving to death you know because if you do like keep going on that path like you would starve to death so it starts making you like try to eat more food you know so and and then it's just me on the couch scrolling through facebook see that (laughs) see that 8.8 and i'm I'm sitting there debating whether or not to finish the last package of pop tarts (laughs) in the whole box you know what i mean i'm just like ah you seem to print out a picture of that 8.8 and just put it on your wall (laughs) or put it on like the inside of your pantry every time you reach for a pop tart it just smacks you 8.8 and, and just so, so the listeners know, because we'll, we'll talk about this in a future podcast, like I, I've kind of been in like just, you know, maintenance for a while or whatever. I don't count or track. I just kind of know what I eat and go, you know, know my portions. But I was, but I wanted to get in that mindset. You know, all, most of our clients have to diet and lose weight. Like that's their goal. So I just wanted to dive in for a little bit and I got tested so that, you know, with the DEXA scan. So kind of seeing the numbers makes it fun. So yeah, so I, I dieted for eight weeks the way we, we teach people and yeah went through it and got some great lessons you know going through that headspace and um yeah so th- that'll be fun to share but uh but yeah went from 11.7 to 8.8 percent body fat um and that's a, i i don't want people to get confused with that too like dude when you're at a single digit and you have not much body fat on you that's a lot different than if you know you, you lose weight and you have a lot more body fat because body fat is stored energy right so if you still have a ton of stored energy uh, you don't have as much to worry about, right? But when you're already really lean, single digit, like you have, then muscle loss and stuff starts to be more of a concern. So, um, yeah. So that'd be a fun. That'd be a fun podcast, I think. Like, I think uh, so. like a you know, fifteen to twenty percent, a ten to fifteen percent, and like how, like, because the the changes are there. I think overall, the same premise. You do the same thing as everyone else. Does. Oh, it's the exact but, same. But but then like these tiny little things, these details that maybe we even obsess about, like yeah, Make, mean more. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it's the same. Stay, pre- dude, stay it's the exact same process. You get in a consistent calorie deficit, and then do whatever you need to do to make that as easy as possible. Right. So that's where the other stuff comes in, like sleep and like and you know your meal sizes and all that. Right. Like if you're not sleeping well. Then you're gonna, your body's gonna try to. You're probably gonna have more cravings and want more food because your body's yep. trying to get energy from somewhere else, right? Right. So sleep helps make it easier. You know, if you just all those factors. Yeah, we'll yep. we'll get into that. So mm, that could be the next episode. Woo. I really want to dig in on that. That'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. Yep. All right. Holla back, guys. Drop us any questions if you have them. Later. Later. <laughs> As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.